We have some major news about the Second Amendment that came out late yesterday, and a federal appeals court has ruled that a decades-old law prohibiting users of illegal drugs from owning firearms is unconstitutional as applied to the case of a marijuana user. And this ruling is a result of the United States Supreme Court ruling last year, the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin, which was decided while this case was pending. And we're gonna wanna talk about this one because this has major implications. Guys, our country is in trouble. Conservatives are being canceled and major brands are going woke just to stay relevant. From Hollywood to beer, it's getting ridiculous. I don't know about you, but I'm doing the best I can to stop giving my hard-earned money to woke brands. I recently found out that the razor company I had been using for a long time had recently gone woke as well. That's why I made the change to Jeremy's Razors. Jeremy's was created because Harry's pulled their ads from the Daily Wire's podcast for value misalignment. So the Daily Wire created Jeremy's Razors as an alternative for people who want to shop at a brand that supports their values. Check out the Jeremy's Razors Precision 5 starter set. The razor features a solid tungsten handle and comes with four razor cartridges made from welded steel blades, each of which features a flip back trimmer for a more precise shave. With the Jeremy Razor subscription, you'll get fresh cartridges sent directly to your door so you're always shaving with razors that are wicked sharp. Their shaving cream and post-shave balms are made to fight irritation and redness while repairing and hydrating your skin. And if you're not looking for a new razor, Jeremy's makes a ton of great hair and body products as well, like Jeremy's shampoo and charcoal body wash, which smell awesome by the way. So stop giving your money to woke razor companies and switch to Jeremy's razors like I did. Check out the link down below and save 15% on your order. I want to thank Jeremy's Razors for being a sponsor of this channel and this video. And thanks to Jeremy's, there's no wokeness on the Freedom Dome. All right, guys, my name is Jared. This is Guns and Gadgets. And on this channel, I bring you Second Amendment news every single day, no matter where it happens in this great land, from litigation to legislation and everything in between. And if you want to stay in the know, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel down below. Let's talk about this huge, huge decision. A three-judge panel in the Fifth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals concluded that a federal law violated a Mississippi man's right to keep and bear arms under the United States Constitution's Second Amendment. The man, whose name is Patrick Daniels, had been convicted under that law uh, after law enforcement found a pistol and a semi-automatic rifle in his vehicle during a traffic stop along with some marijuana roaches or marijuana cigarette butts. Now, during this whole process, nobody administered a drug test, even the United States Drug Enforcement uh, Administration. Uh, even though Daniels admitted that he sometimes smoked marijuana, which federally is prohibited, right? So as a result, he was sentenced to nearly four years in prison. Now on the screen is the case that came out yesterday, and this is the United States of America versus Patrick Darnell Daniels Jr. And the judges said, Title 18 USC 922 G3 bars an individual from possessing a firearm if he is an unlawful user of a controlled substance. Patrick Daniels is one such unlawful user. He admitted to smoking marijuana multiple days per month, but the federal government presented no evidence that he was intoxicated at the time of arrest nor did it identify when he last used marijuana. Still, based on his confession to regular usage, a jury convicted Daniels of violating Section 922 G3. The question is whether Daniels' conviction violates his right to bear arms. The answer depends on whether Section 922 G3 is consistent with our nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. It is a close and deeply challenging question. Throughout American history, laws have regulated the combination of guns and intoxicating substances. But at no point in the 18th or the 19th century did the government disarm individuals who use drugs or alcohol at one time from possessing guns at another. A few states banned carrying a weapon while actively under the influence but those statutes did not emerge until well after the Civil War. Section 922 G3, 
the first federal law of its kind, was not enacted until 1968, nearly two centuries after the Second Amendment was adopted. In short, our history and tradition may support some limits on an intoxicated person's right to carry a weapon, but it does not justify disarming a sober citizen based exclusively on his past drug usage. Nor do more generalized traditions of disarming dangerous persons support this restriction on nonviolent drug users. As applied to Daniels, then, Section 922G3 violates the Second Amendment. We reverse the judgment of conviction and render a dismissal of the indictment. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. We have seen many of these federal prohibitions be struck down post-Bruin. And I'm assuming this will be appealed. However, it is unconstitutional. You might remember in the Bruin decision that the justices, the majority of the Supreme Court said that the only test for whether a, a government restriction on our right to keep and bear arms could be held uh, okay, could be held constitutional, is if it was consistent with the text, the Second Amendment, and the history and tradition of firearm regulation at the time of the adoption of the Second Amendment, 1791. None of these federal restrictions were on the books back then. So guess what that means? And you're gonna to continue to see them fall one by one. And when I tell you guys and gals that the gun controllers are petrified, that some politicians are petrified, that Americans will be able to exercise their rights again, I'm not downplaying that, seriously. The pillars of gun control have been fractured to the core and there is no repairing them. As, well, as long as the Bruin decision stands and the Heller decision stands. Also of interest in this when I read this case was uh, U.S. Circuit Judge uh, Stephen Higginson, who is an Obama appointee, uh, in his concurring opinion agreed while noting that many other gun safety laws, his words, not mine, had likewise been struck down since the Supreme Court's ruling. And he also urged the Supreme Court to provide more guidance in a case that it has agreed to hear in its next term here coming up, saying last year's ruling, the Bruin decision, could otherwise result in the dismantling of the laws that have served to protect our country for generations. Even though he's an Obama-appointed judge, he concurred with this decision, saying that this violated the Second Amendment. That's huge for uh, you know, a Democrat-appointed justice. Now, that case that he's mentioning will decide whether a 1994 federal law that bars people under domestic violence restraining orders from possessing firearms violates the Constitution's Second Amendment or not. Uh, we've chronicled that path thus far, and uh, it is another section under 922G that is poised to uh, be no more. Uh, there is a lot happening in our legal world, guys and gals, as it pertains to our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. And if you want to stay in the know, subscribe to this channel down below. Join this growing freedom family. And like I said, text history and tradition. And if you want this shirt, which says just that, I'll have a link down below. It's a phenomenal shirt, and I love wearing it, uh, especially around Democrat-controlled areas. Uh, it makes people, it makes people angry. All right, guys, thank you for your time. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Until we see each other again, have a great day. Take care.